Hi world, <clears throat> it's um, just after 9pm on Monday the 11th of September 2023. I want to share with you something that, that um, <clears throat> it's very difficult to talk about in rational and logical terms. It very loosely comes under the heading of synchronicity, although it's far more than that. It relates to a phenomena that defies rational and logical explanation and yet is an incredible force for change in all of our lives, both individually and collectively. And from an astrological perspective, that force comes under the name Pluto. Now, in this last 24 or 36 hours, I've released a lot of videos on Pluto. A week ago, I got all my pre-copies of my new Pluto book delivered to me. And for all of those of you who ordered that Pluto book from me in the last 24 hours, it's already in the post, tracked. So when you get it, please email me to let me know you've got it. Um, but there's a lot more to this than meets the eye. Nine months ago, I was at a meal in a, in a vegetarian restaurant in North London, in Camden. And one of the people there was a lady called Alex Trenoweth, who's one of the few British astrologers I've got a great deal of time for, and she's quite a good friend of mine. And she happened to be, at the time, and still is connected with, ISAR, the International Society for Astrological Research. And she said to me, Steve, you've got, you, you know, you've got, you, you've got the gift of the gab. You're good with words. Why don't you do a lecture on ISA? So I said, oh, all right then. So within a week, she was emailing me saying, OK, then give me a title. So nine months ago, I arranged to do a lecture tomorrow evening on the ISA website on Pluto. And this is the blurb. Ready for this? Neo-modernists acknowledge the significance of an individual aesthetic and the acceptance of a pluralist outlook rather than the search for universal solutions associated with the modernist movement. By applying a neo-modernist concept to the increasingly complex contemporary understandings of Pluto, I hope to pose questions and hopefully suggest answers as to how this distant and small planet actually works in modern astrology. Now, I had no idea uh, when I booked in to do this seminar nine months ago that my book on Pluto was going to be coming out. It's coming out worldwide on October the 10th, but all the pre-release -re -pre copies are now being posted. Uh, I had no idea that I'd be doing all these uh, videos on Pluto. I had no idea that at this time... Pluto would be in a massive T-square over a four-week period with Ceres in Aries, in Libra, and um, the North Node in Aries, and hitting lots of midpoints and planets of mine in late Cancer. It seems to me that there's a, a lot more at work here than can be defined as just pure coincidence or even just synchronicity. So I asked myself... How does this little black and white, somewhat orange lump of rock with a small methane atmosphere and nitrogen atmosphere, four, smaller than our moon, four billion miles away, have such a profound transformative and rebirthing effect on all of us at different times in our lives? How does the psychological, impl Im psychological implications of Pluto in our birth chart and Pluto by transit, how do the manifestations of this energy come across in the ways that we know they do but cannot rationally explain? Astronomers, mathematicians and scientists will go, there's no way this can work because they work in a way that's very modernist. They look for simple solutions a more pluralistic way of looking at it is to look at, find at least two different sets of answers for every question at the same time. And if necessary, to juggle between them, to dance with all the different answers, and out of that, try and find some new way of expressing ourselves in a way that's more contemporary and less rigid, 
more futuristic, more wave rather than particle, to explain how the astrology of Pluto has such a profound and dramatic effect upon us. And this is what I'm going to be trying to do tomorrow night. Now, ISAR, International Society for Astrological Research, is a bed for students to share ideas. It's open to anyone who wants to join, and it's free. You can attend this lecture tomorrow night, but you can't get the recording of it unless you're an ISAR member, which one or two of my students are, but that's all. However, if you want to watch, I'm, I know it sounds very academic, but I'm going to try and demystify the subject. It's at 8 p.m. UK time. That's 11 p.m. in the Gulf. That's um, 3 p.m. Eastern Seaboard, midday Western Seaboard. Just go to ISAR, I-S-A-R, isarastrology.com. And um, on the front page, you'll see a picture of me and the, the link to join this workshop, if you want to. It's free, but you can't watch a recording afterwards. That's the deal. So it seems to me that I'm on some type of plutonic wave, some type of plutonic journey at the moment. It's almost as... Well, that sounds derogatory, but it's almost as if I'm... I'm Pluto's energy is, is, is working on, in, with, through... I don't want to say I'm Pluto's slave or Pluto's bitch, but... I'm using Pluto more and more in my readings, and it's a bit scary. It's a bit dark. It's a bit deep. It's not negative, but it's certainly deep. And there is no logical rationality, but the use of metaphor and analogy when working with Pluto gives incredible results. So, yeah, tomorrow night, 8 p.m. UK time. If you want to join, you're welcome. Enjoy. Catch you later, world. Speak to you again in a couple of days. New moon's coming up. Bye now.